So thus far, we've been focusing on descriptive statistics, right? And so how we, how we use numbers to describe our data, right? And, and again, remember that we're talking in most cases about a particular variable, a measure of something. And so we can describe how that, uh, how that variable, how that measure uh, exists in our sample, right? So we can describe things like the, measure, the, the central tendency of it with the mean, the median, and the mode. We can describe the variability uh, of that in terms of the, the variance and the standard deviation and the range. Uh, we can talk about the shape of the frequency distribution, right? We can talk about it in terms of its symmetry or its skew. We can talk about it in terms of uh, kurtosis, etc. But all of these things are what we call descriptive statistics. They describe our data set. They describe how that variable uh, is distributed across our sample, right? And it's really about describing the sample in terms of this variable. Well, the reason that we do statistical work is not just to describe certain things, but to draw inferences from those descriptions. And so that's why we talk about inferential statistics. And that's, that's really the idea of inferential statistics is what inferences can we draw? Um, if I know some stuff about a sample, um, if I know the measures of central tendency, if I know the variability, what conclusions can I come to then about a population? That's where the inferences are. What can, I, what can I determine, or at least what can I infer about a population based on my measure of a particular sample? Uh, now, there, there's a couple things uh, with that. So there, there's a couple of different things I want, might wanna do. Is one is, if I have a sample, uh, I can infer some things about the population that that sample is representative of, uh, whatever that is, right? And so if I wanna know about uh, varsity athletes in college, right? I might have a sample of varsity athletes. Uh, I may measure them on some particular variable and I will then infer some things about the population writ large of varsity athletes or varsity athletes at my college or students at my college or, or whatever my population of interest is from that sample. The, the other thing I can do is take a look at the relationship between my sample and a known population, right? And so what I previously described was if I don't know anything about the population, I can infer some stuff about the population from my sample. If I do know something about a population, I can examine a sample to determine whether or not that sample is related in some way to that population. Is it part of that population? Is it separate from that population, etc.? So those are really the, the two places that I go with inferential statistics. Uh, and again, I'm making inferences about a population from a sample. And either I'm inferring things about the population of which the sample represents, uh, or I am making some comparison uh, in order to establish maybe a relationship or a lack of a relationship between my sample and a population about which I, I otherwise have information. Now, it's not as straightforward, though, as just concluding, right? That's why we call it inferring. It, it's not proof. Um, it's not absolute. Uh, the problem is that whenever we have a sample, uh, whenever to even a random sample, it's not going to be exactly representative of the population. They're going to differ in some ways, right? The means won't be exactly the same. The population mean and then the mean of a sample on a particular variable uh, taken from that population will not necessarily be equal, um, really just due to random chance, if nothing else, right? So the idea of sampling error comes into play, that there are some errors that are introduced just by virtue of taking a sample of the population rather than taking a look at the uh, entire population. So it's not as straightforward as simply saying, this sample, therefore this population. Um, that said, there are some statistical theories uh, that help us get past that idea. So there's some things uh, such as the central limit theory, um, understanding confidence intervals of the mean, understanding things about standard error. These statistical theories give us the, the, the room in order to make some of these inferences. And so that's really what we're going to talk about now is, is taking a look at what these statistical theories are uh, and what they tell us uh, about what we can infer about the population from our sample.